I'm Helen Perry from the Causeway Museum Service and we're here in Coleraine Town Hall looking at the material that we have here on Hugh Thompson in the special dedicated Hugh Thompson study room. This is just a transition for us before we move the collection into the market yard which is a new museum proposed for Coleraine and that's a couple of years away at this stage but this is a great way of just letting people see the quality of this material and kind of have a chance to see it in the meantime. He's very much a lad of this town who was born just up the road from where we were standing in Coleraine at the other end of the pedestrian street. You can actually take a wander up through the town and see the blue plaque where he was born. He then went off to work in Gribbons Linen Mills, which is just across the river here. If you go up, wander over the bridge, the buildings unfortunately no longer survive, but you can walk the street that he would have walked, continue around the corner and go up the hill. You end up in a place that's now a B&B, a very nice B&B that tourists can come and stay in called Breezemount, which his aunt actually lived in with her husband, Robert Hunter, who was a very well-known gentleman around the town, town commissioner um, and that, of that kind of ilk. If you go further afield, Hugh's mum died when he was quite young at about the age of eight, and his father remarried to a Maria Lennox out in Kilray. Hugh and his family kept up very close connections, not only with his friends in Coleraine, but the family out in Kilray, and hence some of the works that we have here link in. We've got watercolours of the bridge at Kilray. There is an illustration that we have in the collection of what is believed to be the Kilray postman, and there's a number of watercolours and sketches of around the Causeway coast from his travels. Hugh Thompson was a local boy who made good, and this is one of the great things for us to have this collection here. He was self-taught, he had no formal training, and it was only when he went to Marcus Ward and worked almost like an apprentice would today under John Vinicom and really developed a skill, honed his skill. And another lovely piece that we have, and again it's quite special to have this, is the big portfolio he took across as a young lad in 1883 to London to show people to try and get work, and in fact it was Macmillan's who spotted the extraordinary calibre of this, this artist who was untrained. Hugh Thompson is actually best remembered by most of us for the illustrations that he did for Quality Street. Those boxes of chocolates that some of us used to get have featured Hugh's illustrations. If you look at some of his Jane Austen illustrations, very similar. What our collection shows, and as you explore through the material that's in the drawers, is that he was an artist of considerable talent and showed a range of styles, some of them almost looking like quite abstracted Japanese-style watercolours, through to very, very fine pencil drawings that are of quite detailed architectural precision. One of the real treasures of this collection is a lovely illustration that was included in Jane Austen's Emma. Jane Austen, of course, has been heavily featured on our television sets recently, and he is regarded as her best illustrator. They weren't contemporary, but in terms of her fan club now regards Hugh Thompson as the best of all the illustrators that illustrated her works. His early style is very much reflecting the movement of the time, exploring nature, expressing nature, studying nature. You're seeing a lot of those lovely drawings and watercolours of flowers and plants and birds, which go on later to inform some of the other work that he's doing. If you look at his book covers, for instance, which you see over in the case here, beautifully tooled with gold embellishment, and you see his ability to capture, if you like, the animal's personalities is actually quite remarkable. And throughout the collection, then, we would have a number of just very light, free and free form sort of sketches, be they dogs, horses in particular, and cattle. He was very, very good at them. But another skill that he had, that he seemed to develop quite early, early on, and we see that in his sort of study of the Kilray Postman, he was great at capturing people's faces and capturing people in their social context. They weren't highly studied portraits, but they were just people he obviously saw walking down the street, you know, great, great observer of people and capturing the style and the, what was going on. There's another lovely piece in the collection which I have to tell you about, which is an, the only children's book that he illustrated. It's called Jack the Giant Killer, and you can see it here. And we have the whole thing. We've actually digitised it, so it's very easy for people to just scroll through it on the computer. And it's just quite an extraordinary, vibrant children's story. And in fact, the couple that sold us the collection talked about reading their kids, the Hugh Thompson, Jack the Giant Killer, to their kids at bedtime, and that it was their favourite, and it was quite a treat for them. So again, it's quite a rare piece to have. Um, so absolutely thrilled about that. These particular drawers here are showing some examples from a collection that we purchased recently, which are pencil drawings that were the illustrations for the highways and byways of Northumbria. There's nearly 200 illustrations in this collection. Again, we had support from the Art Fund and Northern Ireland Museums Council. 
There was a whole series of books done at the time on called the Highways and Byways series, and they were really all over the UK and Ireland. So he would set off for a period of weeks and go up and spend some time in these areas. We have a huge collection as well of his studies and illustrations that he did for the Highways and Byways of Donegal and County Antrim. Of course, back home, he knew where to find all the, the good spots as well. He was producing them at quite a rate, but that's not to say that the pencil work is actually quite extraordinary. Very, very detailed very, very fine. And there are some that are unpublished, so he's producing more than what was needed, giving the the publisher and the author a selection to choose from. His collection of sketches of the landscape around the causeway are just quite extraordinary. It captures the rural life as well as some of the most iconic pieces of our landscape. There's Grey Man's Path, there's Ballycastle Beach, there's Cushion Dun, Cushion Dall, and of course the Giant's Causeway. Fabulous, fabulous collection of works. It's raised the profile of local talent and the sort of contribution that culture can make and people are uh, coming from far and wide to see this material. We've had people from the States a bit very interested in looking at it and because of that nostalgia for Victoriana and the high profile of people like Austin and Dickens through um, TV and things, there is a great interest in his works and I think there's a bit of a resurgence of interest in him because he was sort of quite neglected for a while. We would encourage people to come along and see the Hugh Thompson collection here in Corrine Town Hall. Appointments can be made to view the collection Mondays to Saturdays. So please feel free to ring us on 028 7034 7234.